Hey, good afternoon. My name is Master Sergeant Traub. I'm the Air Force Reserve Recruiter here at Nellis Air Force Base. Um, there are three of us recruiters here. Uh, we each work respective parts of the alphabet. Um, so Sergeant Lascano will be at the beginning of the alphabet. Sergeant Aguirre will be the middle, and I'll be the end. Um, you can contact any three of us if you want to join the Air Force Reserve, have questions, that kind of stuff, and we'll just kind of navigate you to the right person. So don't, you can write it down if you want to, or don't worry about it, just ask us at the end. Um, so a couple things that we're going to go over today. Uh, a little bit about joining Palace Front and Palace Chase, um, kind of the difference, uh, what the difference between Palace Front is, what the difference between Palace Chase is, and if it's something that you're interested in doing. So just to kind of gauge the audience by a show of hands, who in here <coughs> is actually separating? Okay, and out of those separating, any of you all interested in joining the reserve, working on it, that kind of stuff, <coughs> I don't see any familiar faces trying? Okay. Um, so that's what we're kind of be here to d today for you is just to have you understand the difference between Palace Front and Palace Chase if it's something for you. Um, the first thing I'm going to go over is making my clicker work. All right, so Palace Front. So those of you that raised your hand and said, yes, hey, I am separating, um, this means that you're probably within six months of your date of separation. Um, this means that you probably got an email from us that said, hey, um, what is your status? Are you re-enlisting? Are you separating? That kind of stuff. And then probably needing to set up a mandatory one-on-one -on -one appointment with us. Um, that would mean that you fell under Palace Front. In order to Palace Front, you have to join the Air Force Reserve from your date of separation um, until the day that you join the Air Force Reserve. There's not going to be any break in service. Um, what that means is that you complete your, it's not really your military service obligation, you just go to the end of your contract and then you join the reserve from there. You initiate this usually six months prior. Uh, I appreciate it if you don't come in one month, one week, hey, Sergeant Traub, I separate next week, kind of figure it out. The earlier you get everything started, uh, the more we can kind of tailor your process to it. And so we kind of talk to you. We say, hey, what are you interested in doing? What is your motivation? Are you going to school? Where are you locating? And that way we can kind of tailor your whole situation. Um, or do you want to change jobs? Do you hate your job? That kind of stuff. So. Um, a big thing in here is that you can retrain if you want to. So those of you that raised your hand and said, hey, Sergeant Traub, I am separating. Uh, we do have retraining opportunities for you available. You just have to meet the ASVAB score requirements as well as the physical requirements. So we can kind of take a look at that. Say, hey, I, I really don't want to be aircraft maintenance. I really don't want to be security forces. I don't want to be supply. Whatever your job is, uh, we can look at retraining you and going through those opportunities. All right, so those of you that did not raise your hand, that are actually re-enlisting, uh, if you come across the time where you're figuring it out and you said, you know what, everything's not lining up the way I need it to be. I need to be on active duty for a couple more years just to kind of support my family, just to kind of figure everything else out like that. If you re-enlist and for some reason decide to change your mind, you have a palace chase opportunity, okay? So Palace Front is where you complete your commitment. Palace Chase is where you cut your commitment a little bit early. Um, you can cut it once you re-enlist. Um, you don't have to worry about this because if you are in this room, you have completed half your initial enlistment. So if you re-enlist and you change your mind, you get that job that you've been looking for, land that job, that kind of stuff, then Palace Chase will be an opportunity to you. Um, it's open to all AFSCs at any time, and then you can retrain if you want to. So we have in the uh, reserve, we have four different programs, two part-time and two full-times. Uh, one of the part-times is the traditional reservist, reservist, basically one week in a month, 15 days uh, a year. Uh, you're assigned to, an act, to, to a reserve unit. Uh, you get a schedule to go uh, for the whole year, which weekend you're going to show up, uh, and then you show up on that weekend. Uh, <coughs> it's a total of 39 days. Uh, the other program is the IMA program. Basically, you still reservist. The difference is you are assigned to an active duty component. Uh, for example, security forces here, uh, LRS, uh, the hospital, they got IMAs uh, in, in all of those units. So that that's better for uh, if you're not able to find a position near where you're moving to. Uh, the IMA is a better option because your round trip is covered. 
uh, it's more flexible because you don't have an assigned weekend to go. Basically, you make your own schedule. As long as you complete 39 days uh, in fiscal year, you're good to go. Uh, some people do it in, in two parts. Some people do it in one. You go 38 days. You always leave one day at least for your fitness test. So you go and schedule 39 days. Your round trip is covered. Your meals are covered. Your lodging is covered. And you're done. <coughs> so you can go first week in October, do 39 days. By November, you're done. You don't have to worry about uh, doing any more reserve duty until the following year. Okay. The only, uh, the only issue with the IMA program is you have to be fully qualified. You cannot retrain into an IMA position. However, you can go into a transitional reservist position. Uh, once you retrain in there, you can always transfer to an IMA position anytime. And the IMA program is really attractive to people. Uh, sometimes when you come into my office and you say, hey, Sergeant Traub, I'm actually getting a contracting job, so I'm going to be gone for six months, and then I'm going to be back stateside for six months. I can't join the reserve. The IMA give you, gives you that opportunity that when you're back that six months to take those 38 days, and that way you're still getting, you know, getting points towards your retirement and everything, but also able to maintain that contracting job. So just keep, kind of keep that in the back of your mind. The full-time uh, options are art. Uh, basically, uh, anybody who's here in maintenance uh, work with some of these arts. Basically, they're full-time uh, reservists. Uh, they're civilian during the week, Monday through Friday. They get paid as, as a uh, DOD employee. Uh, and one week in a month, they do the exact same job, but as a reservist. Uh, the difference is now both jobs are tied to each other. If you cannot uh, qualify as a military member, you cannot keep doing your civilian job. Uh, but this is a, a good opportunity you have to have two retirements. Uh, you can have a, a, a civil service retirement and a military retirement eventually. So, um, If all those jobs are posted in USAjobs.gov, if, uh, if you don't see it there, it doesn't mean they don't exist. It just means they're not posted. So you come see one of the recruiters and we can look into it and kind of tell you whether it really exists or not, okay? Uh, AGR, that's what we are. Uh, we are the same as you right now, but we work for a for the reserve command. That's pretty much it. We get the same paycheck as anybody, <coughs> any master sergeant in, on active duty will get the same retirement uh, as anybody on active duty, same benefits, everything the same, except we get a paycheck from a different command. Uh, we're a little more flexible as of uh, how we PCS. Um, you apply for positions, once you get them, you PCS, rather than somebody telling you you're leaving to this place. So if you like the place where you are located, you can stay a lot longer there. You can stay for several years uh, rather than having to PCS after three years, okay? Oh. The only problem with this is there aren't that many AFSCs for AGR, mostly recruiting, security forces, uh, admin personnel, and a lot more AFSCs. However, the amount of uh, positions are uh, very limited, okay? Again, all the benefits is an active duty member. For example, if you are uh, getting out on higher tenure, this is a good option. I have members that are getting out staff sergeant 15 years. All you gotta do is complete five more years and you'll retire as a master sergeant which you were not going to make master sergeant in five years from staff. So this way, you know, I, I tell a lot of people, you can come in, come in as, a, as a recruiter, complete five more years on active duty, and you'll retire on active duty uh, as a master sergeant. Now, um, if you really do not want to do uh, full time anymore, you can still, all you got to do is five more years as a reservist, and then you can retire. The only difference, you will not collect your retirement until you're 60 uh, when you retire as a, as a reservist. However, that's pretty much when you need the money. Because uh, right now you can get two jobs if you need to. Uh, when you're older, you don't know if Social Security is going to be here or not, and you don't know if it's going to be enough to cover your expenses. So.
We have bases pretty much everywhere, including overseas. Uh, we have placed people in the IMA program in Germany, Korea, Japan, uh, different countries. Anywhere where we have active duty bases, uh, we have IMA positions as well. Uh, so, plus here in the United States, we got active and reserve bases. <clears throat> Some of the benefits you get, uh, for example, the extra income. Uh, you know, it's nice to have a little <coughs> bit of money. Uh, a lot of people come to our office and have no, they're separating in two months and they have no job lined up, have no health care, no idea what they're going to do. Some of the times we tell them, if we feel that you're really not ready, I tell them, re-enlist. I don't think you got everything together to get out and not have a job, you have a family to take care of. And sometimes, you know, we, we, we're not going to force you to go into a reserve. A lot of time we tell you, you need to re-enlist. That will be the best option for you, okay? Uh, but if you choose to go to the reserve, you'll have all those benefits. Uh, tuition <coughs> assistance, the exact same one you have right now. So those of you who want to transfer your benefits to your, uh, uh, to your um, uh, GI Bill, to your family members, you can still go to school on tuition assistance, okay? <clears throat> Medical insurance, we'll go over in a little bit. SGLI, this, <clears throat> excuse me, the exact same SGLI that you have right now. Nothing changes, same amount. Uh, spouse SGLI is available as well. Retirement, retirement is based on points. How much you're gonna get is based on the points that you have. For every year you have on active duty, you get 360 points, okay? So let's say you've done four years, you completed four years of enlistment, uh, you have, what is that, 1,500, something like that? About 1,500 points already, okay? Um, the only thing you don't get paid until you're 60. Now, anytime you volunteer for active duty orders, does get taken away from that 60. So uh, in my case, I volunteer a lot for orders while I was a reservist, and I could actually collect my retirement if I would have retired as a reservist at age 55, okay? So uniforms are provided to you. Anytime you need uniforms, you go to your unit, you tell them, they'll give you a letter. You go to clothing sales, you get a new uniform, okay? Testing for rank. Basically, in the Air Force, you have to test to make rank above the senior army. In the reserve, most of you who transfer to the reserve will go to either E5 or E6 position. Uh, if you're an E7, we'll find you an E7 position. If you're an E6, we'll try to find you an E6 position. So you will not lose any rank. However, to get promoted in the reserve is based on what position you have. For example, each shop has so many E5, so many E6, so many E7s, E8, E9. So you get paid, you're in a, a certain position number with a certain rank attached to it, and that's going to be your rank. So when somebody leaves, retire, then they need to move people up uh, the, uh, the chain uh, based on basically EPRs, based on you know, whether you have volunteer for deployment. So basically, you're only competing with eligible members of your AFSC in your shop. Sometimes there's nobody else. There's three of you, and you're the only eligible because the other two have not either completed certain PME or have not complete, uh, they're not uh, passing the fitness test. And guess what? You're the one to get promoted, okay? We don't have higher tenure, so you can actually stay in the Air Force Reserve up to 33 years of service or the age of 60. A lot of people stay, they enjoy it, one week in a month is nothing, they, they keep going, okay? Remember, every year, every uh, the more you participate, the more points you get, the more retirement you're gonna get. Our retirement is pretty much like the active duty retirement, points by points. 20 years on active duty is about 7,200 points. If you divide what you're gonna get, it's pretty much gonna be 
per point, you're going to get the same amount of money. But, you know, obviously you're not going to get 72 points because if you haven't done 20 years active, you're not going to get there. But, you know, if you divide, you're paid by 7,200 points, it'll give you, I don't know, 30, 40 cents. That's what you're going to get. And each rank, it varies by rank as well. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> for those of you interested in joining the Air Force Reserve, once you come in, um, this is just a generic gauge over the idea amount of money that you're going to get um, for working a Friday and Saturday. So two days a week, uh, E4, <coughs> four or six years. It varies, give or take, by $20 if you actually look at <coughs> the chart. Um, but this extra money, so I was active duty for five years before myself, and then I went into the reserve. Pull my GI Bill, did that, all that stuff, had you know everything lined up, and then all of a sudden I was showing up Friday, Saturday, and I'm an actual testament that that money makes a huge difference. Um, it'll pay your car payment, it'll pay whatever, just nice, and all of a sudden you work for Saturday, Sunday, and all of a sudden, boop, it's in your paycheck. And so it's, it's pretty nice to have that extra. Um, we also have bonuses in the Air Force Reserve. Our Air Force Reserve bonuses are not affiliated with the active duty bonus, okay? So I know that they just came out with a new bonus list. That's not the same in the reserve. Um, our Air Force Reserve bonus list is different. So if that is going to make or break you deciding to come into the Air Force Reserve, um, our bonuses vary between fifteen to $20,000 uh, for the reenlistment. And so just give us a call and say, hey, Sergeant Traub, um, I on this job, is it on the bonus list? But keep in mind, our bonus list comes out in October one October every year. Um, so the new one will be coming out. So those of you, some of you will be falling in separating November, December, that kind of time frame. Um, so we can't ac actually predict what's going to be on that bonus list. We can tell you what's on this year and then um, for next year. So just give us a shout if, uh, like I said, if that bonus is going to make the decision, $15,000. That's quite a bit for working 38 days a year. Uh, TAMP, super important. So TAMP is the transitional medical um, insurance program. So this actually gives you, if you transfer from active duty into the reserve without a break in service, you get six months of free health insurance, the same exact health insurance that you get right now, okay? The only other people that receive this health insurance are gonna be those of you that are sitting in this room that are getting out for higher tenure. So those senior airmen that are hitting eight years, those, tech, those staffs that are hitting 15 years, um, you will get TAMP automatically. Anybody else will not get that medical insurance. Um, I know it, that it can kind of be a little bit convoluted, but it is all on um, TRICARE. The TRICARE website it exactly explains that, okay? Um, free health insurance for the first six months, and then after that, you're gonna fall under TRICARE Reserve Select, okay? Uh, TRICARE Reserve Select is <clears throat> it's pretty nice because if you're not close to a base, you don't have to go on base to get your uh, health insurance provided. So what that means is that you can pick off of a list of civilian doctors, kind of like if you had Blue Cross Blue Shield, and you can say, hey, I really like this provider, I want this one, make an appointment, schedule your appointments, um, sometimes faster than they can be done um, on an Air Force base. So this is the individual premiums, so it's $50 a month for a single member to cover you for health insurance, and it's right around 225 a month for a family. And that doesn't, <clears throat> excuse me, that does not matter how many family members that you have. So if it's just you and your wife or you and your husband, um, it's 225. It's you and your wife and your eight kids, it's 225. It, really, it does not matter. Um, if you are deciding to get out and you have a company, I would highly recommend that you look in and actually ask them, say, hey, I understand, because <clears throat> it's easy, it's a blanket thing. Hey, I provide medical insurance. Well. If you haven't done your research, there's a lot of different levels of medical insurance, of types of coverage. And so sometimes you may think, hey, yes, I do have medical coverage, but do I have the kind that I need to be able to cover my family if my son breaks my leg? How much is going to come out of my pocket? That kind of stuff. Um, I know for a fact, just to kind of give a living example, I had a guy come into my office. He said, hey, Sergeant Rob, I'm working for M1. Don't want to be in the military. Don't want to be affiliated. Um, I, I work aircraft maintenance, and I'm going to go do that. And I said, OK. And we went over stuff, and I said, hey, just go ahead and give him a call and ask him about their health insurance. So him and his wife sat down. We went over everything. His wife went home, called them, and for 
just about the same health insurance as it was going to be about $850 a month to cover them. Uh, it's a huge difference. And then on top of that, if they decline the health insurance through M1, then they're going to get an extra seven, seven, dollars, seven dollars an hour. Seven right? fifty. Seven fifty an hour. Because what happens is in order for these companies to provide you health insurance, it's extremely expensive. And so if you're saying, hey, I don't need that side, I don't need that health insurance side, that, that company will pay you additionally. So that might be something for you all to look into. Um, there's been people who have joined the reserve just solely for their health insurance. Uh, super important if you haven't looked into it by now. By the way, $7.50 an hour is uh, about $1,000 a week, $1,000 a month. So that's plenty. More than that. Uh, retirement, we kind of touched on that. Um, a little difference, you say, hey, Sergeant Traub, what's the difference if I stay active duty or if I'm in the reserve, what's the difference in my retirement? The biggest difference, active duty, you do 24 years active duty, you turn in that paperwork, you start collecting that paycheck right away. Um, whereas the reserve, you do 20 years, you won't collect your paycheck until you're 60. So however many years that is. Um, those, and I know Sergeant Lascano kind of hit on it before, those of you that are getting out for higher tenure, if you're staffs, and kind of spread the word because I know that um, that the results are coming out soon for senior, or I mean for staff, and then tech a little bit later. Um, but if you only have five years left, you can actually accomplish that. You don't even have to have an AGR position. You can actually just work full time for that additional five years in the reserve, and then collect your retirement. Because um, a lot of times, if you're getting out for higher tenure. It's not because you're a bad airman. It's not because you're you know, a bad NCO. Sometimes it is. Um, but other times it's because you made an isolated you know, issue years ago. Or maybe you're just middle of the line. Maybe you just show up, you go to work, and you say, hey, I'm going to do my job today. And unfortunately, in today's Air Force, unless you're not up here, sometimes you get looked over. Or maybe you're a bad tester like myself. <laughs> and that just happens sometimes. You know, it, A lot of times it, you guys come across my desk, and I'm look and you look at your PIP and there's nothing that you all did wrong. It's just didn't test high enough or, you know, didn't get score, you know, the ratings and stuff like that. So that's an idea for your retirement that you'll be getting um, for a reserve retirement. So this is based off of six years active duty and then the rest um, being in the reserve. So working that one weekend a month, two weeks per year. Right around $1,000, obviously it's going to go up as you know, it goes up year to year. Um, but lifetime earnings, that's quite a bit. Uh, the biggest thing, uh, because none of you all fall under the um, new retirement program. Help me with it. Blended, blended retirement, there you go. Um, because y'all don't fall, or you probably didn't make that cutoff to fall under the blended retirement, really what you're doing is you're doing six years, you're doing eight years, 10 years, and you're the buy Air Force. Thank you for your time. Um, and you don't get anything back from it. So this gives you an opportunity for you to be able to pick up, be able to continue to do your stuff, whatever you have plans for, go to school, you know, get that job, that kind of stuff, but just serve at a part-time capacity. That way you can continue your service and you know, get back the time that you gave in. And then we have Sergeant Aguirre here. We missed him. <laughs> he just, got, he just uh, came in last month. So. But contact any of us. We're located in Building 20 um, at the FSS. The easiest way to get a hold of us is going to be, or for me anyway, is going to be email. Um, we're here doing briefings. We go up to Creech and doing briefings and stuff like that. Just because you set up an appointment doesn't mean that, hey, I'm going to join. It just means, hey, I'm going to throw some stuff at you and see if you can accommodate me and see if you can you know, help me out. We're pretty black and white people. Sometimes we can't help people out. You know, they say, hey, certain job, I want to be this specific job. Well, if we don't even have that in reserve, how am I going to be able to help you? So we just give us a chance to kind of look over that for you. Do you have any questions? I got a few more. Uh, okay. Sergeant Lascano is going to right. chime so, in. Piggyback on that. <laughs> so there's a few more things real quick. Uh, one is deployments. A lot of you, uh, a lot of people come to my office and they're like, I'm missing my kids growing up. I did. I got out of active duty uh, back in the 90s because I, w I missed my kids growing up. There was a lot of, the up, up tempo was very high. So a lot of people have that issue. Uh, in the reserve, you still deploy, uh, but we are on a uh, schedule AEF. Uh, however, you get to know when you're deploying way ahead of time. 
and the only one that can force you to do more than one week in a month and the 15 days is the President of the United States by signing an activation order, okay? Most, most of the deployments in the Air Force Reserve are, fill, are filled with volunteers. So normally, shop, uh, your shop chief will come in and ask you and tell you, hey, we have a deployment in uh, June next year. Actually, my daughter is deploying uh, in October, and they ask volunteers, she volunteers, and she's going to Korea uh, for four months. But uh, even after you volunteer, you don't have to volunteer for a whole four months. Most of our deployments are either three or four months. Uh, you can actually volunteer for a couple months, as long as they can find somebody else that volunteers for that other two months, and then they cover one position already, okay? So most of our deployments are covered by that. A lot of people make more money in the military than they make outside, so sometimes you get a lot of people volunteering for deployments just for that. Uh, <clears throat> just because they want more points also uh, towards retirement, so we don't have an issue as, as far as having to force people in the reserve to, to deploy, okay? Uh, the other one is uh, transfers. Uh, for example, if you live, uh, if you move, you're already assigned to a base and all of a sudden you move to another base uh, and now you can't make it if you're like five hours away, we, you know, some people do, but if you don't want to make it, uh, all you have to do is find the nearest base from your new uh, home record and you see if, the, if your position is available. If it's available, they'll transfer. If not, you have the option to retrain. If you're not willing to retrain, you go back to your unit and you ask them to put you back into the inactive ready reserve. Most of you are going to the IR right now. If you have not completed eight years uh, in the Air Force, you will go to the IR anyways when you separate. So at that point, you ask to go to the IR and based on you know location, family, uh, school, family, and you know when you move away, those, those are pretty good reasons, and they normally don't deny it for those reasons, and you'll go to the inactive ready reserve. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's it. Any questions? Right, thanks for your time. Thank you.